All right, cheers, everyone. We're live. Welcome cheers, to Water Cooler. Cheers. cheers. I, have, I, have, like that. I have this like uh, blueberry pomegranate. Apparently, I'm like the child here drinking juice when you guys are drinking. <laughs> well, beer. it's a little it's a little <laughs> early to be drinking out in San Francisco today, but yeah. well, cool. Hey, listen, guys. If, if you're if you're on uh, if you're on Twitter right now, you guys can follow us at the hashtag Pound Water Cooler. Uh, Chris is going to be monitoring the conversations throughout the entire show. Uh, if this is the first time that you guys are listening to the Water Cool, this is a show about really growing your business. We talk about advertising, we talk about marketing, we bring on some really smart people who are passionate about what they do to focus on just bringing value each and every week to you guys. So we hope you enjoy it. If you're again, if you're a first time viewer, welcome. If you're a long time viewer, welcome back, guys. We're you know, thrilled to have you on the show tonight. So uh, let me uh, before we bring on Ryan and, and, and dive into the topics that I want to cover today, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, you guys know I'm a huge fanboy of, of Product Hunt. I've been uh, promoting these guys like every week. It's sort of one of our best kept secrets for staying in touch with what's new, what's happening in technology. And the thing that I personally love about the product, um, ProductHunt.co, is the fact that there's a community um, that's built around it. It isn't just one person who is just like on TechCrunch telling you what the latest technology is, you've got this amazing community of really smart people who are entrepreneurs themselves, startups themselves, who are all sort of sharing and promoting and talking about this technology that's 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 emerging. And it, it gets excited if you're involved in this in this space. So on that note, Chris, um, I know you had things you want to talk about. You want to open up about some of your tips here? Yeah, did you mention the hashtag? I don't know, hashtag water cooler. If people are on Twitter, I wanted to say yep. uh, thanks to Nicole and Valerie and Zach and everybody that's watching, John. Make sure you guys share the link. I mean, when I looked at the notes, Jimmy, for the show, and the website is producthunt.co. Producthunt.co. When I looked at the show notes, I, I was tempted to, to basically promote the show as you know the most takeaways ever because there are so many specific things that we'll talk about. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Ryan does uh, know more than just how to curate really cool technology. So uh, share the link, you guys. Let everybody know you're watching the show. Use the hashtag. And the, the tip of the week, Jimmy, is just really quick. You know, we work together so closely. We have all these calls. We work with all these awesome clients. And we meet people like Ryan. And, you know, I just thought each week I, I would try to share one kind of entrepreneur best practice that I picked up. This week it's from a book. And uh, the book is called uh, Perfecting the Pitch. And the guy's name is, is actually Robert Shapiro. Who, and he's not the, the attorney from the OJ trial. It's a different guy. He has another book called Dare to Prepare. Great books. Perfecting Your Pitch and Dare to Prepare. And uh, the idea is DDD. Very easy to remember. Triple D. We won't go there. D, the first D is draft. The second D is devil's advocate. And the third D is deliver. And when you're busy in your business, whether it's an email, an ad like we're doing, Jimmy, or mm -hmm. whether it's a quick presentation you're going to give on the phone, or whether it's a conversation that you're going to have with your kids, you know, it really is a book about scripting and the importance of scripting. And so whether you're scripting an email, an ad, anything you're doing, this very simple concept that, yes, you should draft it, but the devil's advocate piece is really critical. The devil's advocate piece of it really matters because, and he talks about Abigail Adams being the best devil's advocate of all time, you know, to her husband. That was the role she played. So the, the idea is draft have someone devil's advocate that you trust, and then deliver. And if you put that simple mentality behind the way you run your business, you'll ship more and you'll ship better. And I think there's some, you know, some takeaways there. So uh, anyway, that's Chris's Absolutely. tip of the week. <laughs> yeah. Listen, let, we're, we're, I was actually going through our old notes, Chris. We have so many different segments that we try out. Tip yeah. of the week. There's one called Let's Get Wet. That one didn't last very long. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this one sticks, sticks around here for a while. All right, cool. Well, hey, uh, and Chris, I know yeah. you got some technology you want to talk about. We'll sort of intertwine those in, in, throughout the show here. Uh, but I definitely want to cover some of the things that we kind of uncovered in Product Hunt today. But before we do, Ryan, uh, for those of our viewers who have no idea what Product Hunt is, no idea about your backstory, just kind of take us back to sort of where this all started and, and you know, walk us through today because I know you guys are in a position where this thing is just kind of taken off. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. This is uh, this is fun, and I've actually 
more recently just started a, a podcast of my own. So, uh, and it's really just a few dudes and, and women, you know, coming on talking about products. So I love this kind of stuff. Um, so my name is Ryan, and I started Product Hunt. This was back in November, I think, actually. Uh, for those that don't know, Product Hunt, if you're familiar with Hacker News or Reddit, the easiest X for Y description is, you know, Reddit or Hacker News for products. So it's a community of people that submit new mobile apps, websites, uh, sometimes you see Kickstarter campaigns, hardware, a lot of different things, and then the mm -hmm. community upvotes the best stuff each day. So at the end of the day, you have a leaderboard, essentially, of the best things, best products uh, deemed by the community uh, to check out. And so I found a lot of really cool stuff um, on there, and you know, it really was inspired back late 2013 uh, of one, my love for products. Uh, I work in technology. I live in San Francisco. I'm always playing with new things. And also my desire to, to kind of talk about them with, with friends. So a lot of times when I, you know, meet entrepreneurs and friends for coffee or we hang out or we hang out at a water cooler, I mean, products are water cooler conversations. And yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I wanted to have those type of conversations that I have offline. I, want to have the, I wanted to find a place online to do that. And I, I didn't really know where I could talk about products with other people. So, um, you know, it really just started off as a simple email list. Uh, I don't know how much you want me to go into the whole, well, whole no, I, story. Well, well this, and I'll just jump in here because I, I actually think yeah. this, is, this is particularly true because we had Chris Brogan on last week on the show. And I think you know who Chris Brogan is. And, we, you know, he was talking, and he shared this bit of advice with us, which is getting outside of our industry. So our audience, yeah. right, they're involved in real estate. There are different roles within real estate. Some are administrators. Some are the technology providers. Some are the people who are just actually practicing real estate agents or running teams. And for me, what's so exciting is you're, you're coming from an, uh, an industry that is just completely unrelated to real estate. Yet there are so many different parallels between what you are doing at Product Hunt and what we should be doing in real estate more often. Because you just mentioned something there that I think is really important. I want, you to, I want you to talk a little bit more about this. And I want you to also talk about the growth of the company or the growth of the, of the site. Because this, this, this is something that you started with the idea of bringing your passion, something you're interested in, to the world at large. And then you wanted to surround yourself or attract people who sort of shared that same vision and sort of had that same beliefs and value set. And you took it from a simple email list, right? You MVP'd it to, from an email list to what it is today. And, and what are you guys looking at in terms of users logging in, voting activity right now today? And we're at, what, six months, eight months into it? Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Right now today, we I'll hold off the exact unique uh, user number just because I'm not ready to quite reveal that, not because I'm ashamed of it means, but just not ready to share it quite yet. Uh, but we are, <laughs> but we, we are up to uh, well over 10,000 email subscribers, um, and each day, you know, there's, uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to actually share, we have around 200,000 uh, product clicks. So I think one of the, the one of the things that's important uh, in our industry and that can be applied to, like, the real estate is, what is the metric that you should be tracking that's most important, because there are several of them. Mm -hmm. And one of them is how many people are actually clicking on these products. Because if they're not clicking through and actually like trying out these products, then why does it? What does anything really matter? And yep. so we are driving uh, 200,000 uh, clicks to different products each month, uh, which is substantial. And based which on is, it's, it's insane. It it really it, it's such and that, that that's just and I just want to stop right there because I don't want to I don't want to drill you on the exact uniques and bounce rates and things of that nature. But yeah. just yeah. to put it in perspective. This is something that didn't exist eight months ago that now is driving 200,000 200, clicks to other websites. And if you go to the site, you'll understand what we mean by other websites um, uh, you know, each and every month. And it's, I'm sure it's growing up by an order of magnitude. And yeah. to me, the, Chris, I want to bring you in the discussion here because this is on, to on the topic of marketing here. In well, our well, industry, uh, actually, Jimmy, really quick, I think it's the topic of curation because – you can curate quicker than you can create, and we live in a very quick and nimble world. Our company is called Curator, and instead of trying to build the best CRM, build the best landing page tool, build the best website platform, we, we basically chose to curate partners to plug it together. And I, just thinking about the specific idea of if you're going to geek out and look at technology and products all the time anyway, why not find a platform to put that into and build a community around? What mm -hmm. My first thought, Jimmy, was houses. You know, people will look at the houses of the week. 
You know, and there's agents that right now, they go into the MLS, they do all those little searches they only know, and they know what the coolest houses are for sale. They actually do know the better home on the better street versus this one. And I think this idea that, you know, you can't list every house in your market, but you can be willing to curate the ones that are listed, share those without trying to sell them, but really just showcasing the things. And, and, anyway, there, there are a lot of parallels to, you know, curating the top stories about real estate versus trying to write the best stories about real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, well, that, and that's where I think is, and this is kind of what I, what I was trying to get at with that question, though, for you, Chris, which Sorry. is, no, it's okay, because it, I think it, it, it kind of ties into what I'm going to ask you here is, in real estate, we are trained to sort of. In Ryan, you may not know this, but we're sort of pre, like, become number one on Google, right? You know, appear on page one. You got to focus on SEO, and we, and there's this sort of you know, big movement of, uh, you know, of, of ways to game the system, right? And so, Chris, my question to you is, you know, when you when you hear a story like Product Hunt, right, isn't that sort of proof that that model, if it's not dead, it certainly is dying, and if there there's a better way online, even if today is your first day to start it, right? In terms of like growing your brand and getting some exposure. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a smart model. I think there's opportunities to like if you were to go to a realtor as an example and say yeah. that as a part of this idea, it's only gonna really work if you link to Zillow, link to Trulia, link to Redfin, link to everywhere. This wouldn't work if it's just here's my list and here they are on my site, like you know, Ryan's site is so lightweight. You know, we'll show it here in a second. I'll try a screen share. The, but the, the primary <laughs> goal... Go ahead, I'm sorry. The, the primary <laughs> goal of the email, when you yes. get the email from Product Hunt, the primary goal of the page and the website is to get you to the source, right? Yep. And we, a lot of times, don't want to send people to anybody but our own source. And, you know, when I started running Facebook pages and kind of doing social media, I wasn't creating any content. I was going to Mashable, going to TechCrunch, you know, very similar. And, and finding what was best, putting that out there to the community to let them discuss it, vote on it, uh, et cetera. So I think this, this idea, it, it sounds great, Jimmy. But when you sit a realtor down and say, are you going to send a list that links to all these other places, it is counterintuitive to the way they've been taught to think about marketing. Um, so you know, yeah. Disclaimer. Well, it, right? it, it, no, you know, it, it's ca it's counterintuitive, but you know what? It, it, like we say it every single week. Like I, I'm just so sick of everyone kind of copying their competition because there's so many examples like this that I think are that are are proof that you should be doing it a different way. So on that note, Ryan, I wanted to ask you about something I know you're really passionate about, which is this idea of actually building real connections, and real relationships online in real yeah. estate. Like th there is like that's the that's the number one priority networking 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 right that's sort of that's been ingrained in, in our minds for for decades but it, you know online agents have really struggled to make that jump right they they sort of are, 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 are like as Chris was saying earlier they're so in, sort of programmed to just promote so just talk to me about I guess some of the advice you might have as someone who's built a community how do you actually build real connections online how do you build real relationships uh, in your experience. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's how can you provide value? So, you know, that's that's a very generic, uh, not very actionable piece of advice, but that should be at the core of what you're trying to do. And, you know, it's, for me, in, in the tech world, everyone is using Twitter, and Twitter has been, uh, Twitter has, like, changed my life. It's actually kind of crazy how serendipitous, uh, all these serendipitous connections that I've made through Twitter and in ways to keep in touch with people and build an authentic uh, relationship with them remotely with so many different people. And blogging has also helped with that. Uh, you know, you write one piece and it can broadcast to thousands of people. And that's that's what's worked for me. Now, I'm in the tech industry where this, these are where my like people kind of hang out. So not knowing the real estate industry, where do those people hang out? Are there communities online uh, that they are interacting with? And how can you engage in that community and actually like provide value rather than pushing your own content? Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's I try and be helpful if I can. Uh, with as much time as I have, and then just being personable and like authentic, uh, which you can really shine through um, on the internet. You don't need to be face to face. And what I love about the internet is it makes uh, building relationships much more scalable. Like you can go to an industry event, and that's frankly the best way to engage and connect with someone is face to face. But 
you're very limited on how many people you can actually really connect with uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. Whereas online, on Twitter, I can connect with hundreds of people every single day. And even though they're very lightweight connections, uh, they do mean something. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, who I'm sure everybody, I think you've even, have you had him on the show? I think you maybe have. Yeah, we have, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Not, so he's, I mean, everyone knows, uh, not everyone, but a lot of people know Gary Vaynerchuk. And uh, I've take some, taken some inspiration following his career uh, as well and being, you know, just very manual with everything. And it's pretty remarkable what he's been able to do over the past, like, five years or so just by hustling. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, yeah. you, you, when you're saying these things, you may think they're obvious, right? And I, you, yeah. because I, I get some sense, you're like, you're, you're worrying, like, is this, is, is this, you know, deep enough? But listen, this, this is yeah. sort of the, the basic stuff we got to constantly be re reinforcing. Um, and, and I'll, this I'll, give you, I'll, I'll share yeah. like more actionable, even though this is again, I think probably obvious, but uh, I used to do this when I had more time, frankly, but I still do it, and it's. I would think every single person that would share my blog post on Twitter. So I would have a search field. I, I use TweetDeck, and you can have columns of different searches. And yep. I would have my personal blog linked. And if I had a guest post on like the next web or something, I would add that link as well. And I would personally say thank you, first name, thank you, first name, to every single person that shared my post. And you know, it's it's very small amount of effort, really. Um, it adds up over time if you have more and more people sharing, but. People appreciate that, even though you're saying the same thing to everyone. You're you're saying their first name, and they're like, "Okay, you actually like took a second to say thank you to me. I appreciate that." And mm -hmm. that not only potentially builds your following over time, but you become more memorable because you're like, "Oh, like when Gary Vaynerchuk says, hey, thanks, Ryan.' Like, I remember that. I I have some more respect for him because of that." Um, mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of little small things really help and go a long way in becoming more memorable and building. Uh, at least a door for a real relationship. Jimmy, this is actually a really interesting thing here because on Facebook and Twitter, it is it is not natural to use someone's name, right? You you normally would uh, like if you're tweeting someone, you use their Twitter handle. If you are, uh, as an example, like if you wrote on my wall, Jimmy, yeah, you, you don't really put the name, right? Because sure. you're just kind of assuming that yeah. I know it's for me, but I think there's kind of this little, uh, you know, obviously it's working for Ryan, uh, the same way that when you talk, talk to somebody, you should say their name and say their name, and if you email them, you would say, hey, name, you know, maybe when you tweet somebody, if it's Toledo, Metro, John, you know, you actually say, hey, John, thanks for watching the show. I know I personally don't do that. I usually would say, thanks for watching. We appreciate the, you know, loyalty of our viewers. But I think that little bit of saying, hey, Nicole, thanks for tuning in tonight. There's no way to automate that. It doesn't scale, but mm -hmm. it does scale over time. Think about Twitter itself. Mm -hmm. Each tweet might get five links. But if you're tweeting 80 times a day, you know, it, it adds up. So yeah. uh, and even if Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg have said that social media and building relationships is about lightweight interactions over time. So uh, you know, all really relevant stuff. Yep. It's. I would also say it's like just be yourself and have fun in a way too. So I mean, an example is the other day uh, I noticed somebody tweeted some mentioned something about Product Hunt and I said like thanks or I engaged with him and his profile was like a Santa hat and I was like nice Santa hat, hat dude. Like just little things like that are fun uh, and people like will probably smile just because like oh you noticed I'm wearing a Santa hat in my my profile picture and it's like summer. It's kind of weird. Uh, other thing, other things I'll do, you know, and emails. Email is like the best place to engage with someone. I think uh, online because it's private. It's one on one, and you know, I'll throw in animated gifts every now and then. It just it like delights people. They get surprised, and you're like, oh, that's kind of clever. I didn't think about that. So, again, uh, just be fun uh, is another piece of advice. Uh, another piece of generic advice. Well, you know, <laughs> Jimmy, I just, I just tweeted four people just now and used their name. It's a it's really exhilarating. I'm telling you, man. I, I, I really, I really it, it's really different. Like, you know, Tri City's agent is just a guy named Josh. You know, and it, it, you know, I mean, you well, know, well, well, yeah. listen. What, what, what you? And this is again. This is like this. Tom Peters wrote an awesome book called The Little Big Things, and I, and I think this is this is this is 
and we'll 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 move on because we have we have like 50 products to talk about, guys. So we this is going to be a show about products. Uh, Ron, you may not know this, but we have a, a segment called Rapid Fire in which we talk about some of the te top uh, technology products each week. This the rest of the half yeah. hour here, we're going to get into sort of a rapid fire where I want to get you guys reaction to these things. But the last thing I'm going to say on this note is, like, in real estate, we are and the industry at whole is always looking for the ROI of of using a platform. And what you both are describing, right, is the fact that if you if you change your lens a little bit and look at this as n not necessarily immediate, like how am I get business right now, and change the lens towards you know making a connection, building a relationship, providing value, mm -hmm. the ROI comes. It comes every single time that we've we've had anybody in the show who's talked about this. So, I, you know, Chris, I don't know if this is getting back to basics, but you know, for all my Zig Ziglar fans out there and all the people who watch, like you know, how to win friends and influence people, like. There are these basic philosophies apply very much to the social interactions we have every single day. I agree with that. So we're, let's let's show the home screen, Jimmy. This was my quick segment on products. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully it'll work. Well, everyone who's if you're if you're not on Twitter right now, get a pen and paper because we're going to start blasting through these things. We want you guys to absolutely check them out after the show. So go ahead, Chris. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Screen no, and, and maybe people can you know actually mention that we're doing a live demo on the water cooler. Share the link for us one more time. We're at the halfway point of the show. And I'm loving the conversation, but this is just an example, Jimmy, of one day uh, what happens to be the home page for Product Hunt today. And it's very simple, it's very clean, and at a high level, okay, just to choose one here, uh, if I click on one, it actually just goes over to that company's home page. So that's why it's, it's just a curated list of these different websites. But just today, Jimmy, seeing kind of what was up here, and it's it's pretty different every day, if not every week. I found a number of things I would use immediately or look into more. So one is really quick description, which I love, reported for Twitter. If you uh -huh. use reported for Gmail, you know the value. So reported for Twitter, boom, I'm in. I'm checking that out. Here's another one. This was one of my favorite. Well, Hipster let, me just, yeah, let, me just stop, let me just stop right there. People who don't know what reportive is, just give me a quick 20 seconds on what reportive is and why it's valuable. Yeah, so Reportive plugs into your Gmail, and then it, it provides tons of additional analytics around people as they go back and forth. So for the, you know, it could be the first time you ever get an email from someone, but it uses their email to gather extra data. So this is the same concept. It's using Twitter to get all this other data, real-time information, personalized information about what people tweet. So it's basically Reportive mm -hmm. for, for Twitter, which I thought was really neat. Uh, a couple more. Hipster, sure. This is a really cool one. Hipsterdomainfinder.com. You know how it's really hard to find a good domain, Jimmy? It's you know, impossible. The, it, it really is. <laughs> so th this is really cool, like accuser, aimless.ly, right? Like autops, ease, <laughs> right? <laughs> hideous.ly, nervous.ly. So th this idea oh. that there are some kind of <laughs> Hipster domains, devilish.ly, and then that kind of links out to purchase the domain uh, on another yeah. site. So I thought that was really neat. I uh, definitely looked at that for a few minutes. Here's a couple other ones. You're big on Clarity, Clarity Live, which is them introducing the video chat with experts. You've used Clarity. Jimmy's getting yeah. consulting from former Airbnb employees, you know, for us at Curator, which is cool. This is another great one I looked at, Jimmy, mockups, M O Q. White yeah. wireframing used to be something that required a technical person. So let's say you're, you're a realtor and you want to go to a company and say, hey, I want something to look like this, but you don't know how to build the actual website. Wireframing is what that's called, and it's actually pretty easy to do with a good system. So mock-ups mm -hmm. I took a look at for a few minutes. Uh, and then this one I thought was really neat, Conspire. It's Go Conspire. Well, let, yeah, let, sorry. Let, me hold you, let me hold you real quick there. Um, yeah. So Clarity Live, Clarity.fm. We had Dan Martell on the show many months ago. Huge fan of the, of the of the product. I use it. I love it. Live essentially is is like a webinar, but you can actually with with just brilliant entrepreneurs like uh, Eric Reese. I think is the first one they have right now. Someone who I have a lot of respect for. But you can actually do live Q and A with them. So it's a little bit more of a small group, I believe it is, where you RSVP to it and you can live Q and A. So. Again, going back to Chris Brogan's concept of getting outside of our industry to learn from other industry experts can inspire us to do better at our job, uh, especially when you have people like Eric Reese who are teaching you. So, Chris, go spire. Go, go conspire. Is that right? Go yeah. conspire. 
Yeah, and I told everyone, you know, listen, let's just set the tone. We're going to go through a lot of stuff quick. We can't go deep dive into any of it, but uh, this is goconspire.com. This is so yeah. smart. So basically, it looks at your emails, looks at the people that you're contacting, and it basically can show you the best path to a connection. Uh, it gives you an extended network based on your current network. So if you wanted to figure out, how can I meet Ryan, right? You know, there's something like on LinkedIn called mutual connections, first degree, second degree. It's basically that kind of data for your email, which is really, really cool. I downloaded their report. It was really awesome. Uh, definitely used it really quickly. And then this is the last one I'll show. I'll go back to you. But Pipes, I'm always mm -hmm. looking for apps that make reading content on my iPhone simple and clean and kind of a fun experience like Zite. And Zite is going away, uh, which has been my favorite, you know, That's app. terrible, though. That, what, what, they had just recently announced that? No. Well, the, the long, short story is that Flip, well, CNN acquired Zite. And yeah, then that. Flipboard acquired Zite. And as a part of the acquisition, they're sunsetting Zite, which, you know, it's bullshit because it's one of the best apps <laughs> I think ever, but anyway, so in in the process of knowing Zeit's going away, I'm always on the lookout for really good newsreader apps. This is an app called PipesApp.com. It's on Google and uh, iTunes. Beautiful interface, simple and clean to use. So, you know, I, I could go through more, but this is just the leaderboard today and the idea is that that, just like some of the other sites that he mentioned, Jimmy, sites like Dig, sites like Reddit, uh, mm -hmm. it, it changes all the time because, you know, one thing I didn't show, let me show it really quickly. I think it's important. So sure. what, one thing I didn't show is that, you know, if you don't want to just click over to the technology, there is kind of this community that comments mm -hmm. around the app. You can see right there, great example. Look at Ryan hopping in the trenches. Letting people know that you know he heard their feedback, right? So well, there's. I'll interject yeah. real quickly. One of my favorite parts about Product Hunt Two is the founders when they come in the conversations themselves. Actually, open up, open up the Clarity Live thread. So, so this morning, Dan, you know, Clarity Live launched, and we pulled in Dan Martell, and he was answering questions. And uh, this is part of why I started Product Hunt. Really, is like I love talking about products, and even better, I love talking about the products from with the founders themselves. And so you can kind of have this AMA experience with those people directly rather than re reading a press release that is, you know, on TechCrunch yeah. or, or elsewhere. This is a lot more engaging and, and fun from my perspective. Yeah, I really love that feature, which I didn't even know existed till right now. So I'm really, that's a new feature I'll, I would definitely use. And it's almost like, you know, Quora is kind of like a graveyard. You know, it's like a Wikipedia. You just kind of go there every now and then. It doesn't really suck you in, really. And I Plus, think they edit they edit your stuff too over there, which is always I think really insulting. So if you use uh, wrong, the wrong grammar or, or misspell a word, yeah. But edit the, it. the reason I was saying that is it is actually a place where you can see questions answered about companies by the people that work there, and yeah. that's more a kind of appealing. You know, Ryan having that feature is really cool, and Dan being a past guest, uh, you know, people ask us a lot. If you go to YouTube.com/slash Curator TV. We have 55 episodes and counting with Dan Martell, Gary Vaynerchuk, Chris Brogan, Jay Bear, Ryan Hoover. You know, we, we really try to try to bring great guests. But that's all I got you, man. I'm going to let you and Ryan talk about the rest of the stuff. But sure. that, to me, I thought was worth doing because if I get an email from Product Hunt or if I have a few minutes of downtime to check something out, I check out Product Hunt. What does that say about curation? What does that say about quality? community. You know, I think it, it, it really, I'm just happy for his success. So what else you got on the list there? Cool. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep going on this rapid fire. So Ryan, I, I want to talk about sort of social gifting here for a moment, because I know this mm -hmm. is sort of a big trend we're seeing. And Chris, you may want to jump into this if, if, if uh, Ryan, you never use this service, but are you familiar with TwitGift uh, by any chance, which I think is a Twitter gifting service? Uh, sounds familiar, but I don't think I've used it myself. Yeah. Is there, oh. is, I can, hop in. I can hop in. I, I used it. So I saw Chris Brogan tweet about it yep. uh, because someone had sent him one. And it basically caught my eye because in the packaging there was like a little blue feather, you know, from the Twitter bird basically. Yep. And it allows you to send somebody a physical gift through Twitter 
Uh, it comes with beautiful packaging. There's no way that you wouldn't take a picture of the gift and tweet it. So it's social gifting. Right now they have like coffee, marshmallows, and one other thing. And uh, I actually did twit gift something to Lisa Archer, and like they respond on Twitter. It's a really great experience. So if you have a friend or somebody that you network with that you know loves Twitter, I would advise you guys all to send them a twit gift. But did, is that from Product Hunt, Jimmy? Yeah, well, I, I found I, I think it was from Product Hunt. If, if okay. not, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be there. But, uh, but Ryan, I just want to get your just quick two cents on just social gifting. If there's other applications you recommend, and just the topic kind of at large. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I haven't used many of those services. However, uh, a friend of mine near he he sent me uh, a gift through Sesame. Have you heard of Sesame before? No. So Sesame, well, so to backtrack a little bit, for me, it's really hard to find gifts for people. For most people, especially my parents, I get well, shoot, Mother's Day is coming up Sunday, I think, so I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, back on topic. Uh, it's hard for me to figure out what to get them uh, usually, and Sesame makes it easy. They give you packages, and they have different price tiers, but it's a package of something that's themed typically. And Nier gave me a gift, uh, surprised me with a gift through Sesame, and it was a package of, you know, actually this this notebook. It had, uh, I think, some coffee in it, some biscotti, uh, a few other things. I think some socks. So kind of random, but it was it was packaged very nicely and it was fun to open and. Again, like you said before, it's it's one of those things that you take a picture of and you share because it's like kind of delightful. Uh, so Sesame is one of the few that I've experienced myself, but you know I don't have much experience in social gifting because I I don't buy many gifts for people, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I think I think the, the topic at large here, which is something you talk a lot about in, in in some of the articles or blogs you've written, which is this idea of making that personal connection. Kind of taking a, a little bit, yeah. a little bit deeper, right? Sending a personal email, just saying the person's name when you're having a social interaction with them. I think the same thing is true with with gifts. We use Facebook gifts really regularly. Uh, we love them. Chris, you want to add to that? Well, I was just gonna say, Jimmy, this will sell you on Sesame because sincerely is who owns Sesame. Sincerely yeah. mm -hmm. is a company that we use their application called Ink Cards to send. Uh, you know, beautiful postcards to people, really quick, couple taps, yeah. and so it's it's actually sincerely.com/sesame, and you know I love that it's it's an experience. It's about the presentation, yeah. uh, handpicked by experts. This is all the stuff from their website, but I, I do agree, and I know in real estate, listen, you know, giving a gift to you know as a closing gift, you know, this idea of having past clients that you want to give a gift to. Uh, gift giving is one of the secret ninja tricks to networking at the highest level. Back to you, Jim. Hey, yeah. I, I got to plug one thing that's relevant to this. Uh, do you know Teespring? Yeah, well, I'm wearing. I'm wearing a. If you can see here, I'm wearing my. Oh time. no way! Okay. Yeah, I had to pull it out of the hamper because it was it was dirty. So. That's <laughs> awesome. I should be rocking it. So. I love Teespring because it makes it super simple to create a T-shirt and then sell it online. And I've sold maybe 150 or so uh, Teespring shirts, like Product Hunt shirts, and I will continue to do this. And people love them first off, but also when you give you know, give them an opportunity to buy something like that, people get excited. Of course, they're wearing your swag, so it reminds you of the service, and people just love them. And there's also, I have a, a product request. I'm going to grab something out of my bag here. Uh, if anyone knows of a, uh, a service that will print stickers and ship them to people individually, please tell me, because I printed out these stickers. Here's one of them. Can you see that? Yep. Like it says Product Hunt. It's fun. Uh, Jesse, uh, uh, J-E-S-S-3 dot com. Uh, he did the design. And so I printed out these stickers, and I manually have been mailing these out to people. Uh, I task rabbit some of it, but I've been manually <laughs> mailing them out to people in the community, and People on Twitter are, you know, sharing pictures of it, and they're thanking me, and, and they like it. It's fun, but I wish there was a way I could do this more easily and just uh, basically have Teespring for stickers. Is what well, I want. I'm, I'm sure it's going to pop. And, and the sticker mule doesn't do that, right? They just they're ship you the bulk. Exactly, yeah, and bad. it's it's hard yeah. to to make it affordable. I mean, you you might have to charge quite a bit for a sticker, but. Um, you know, yeah, to be able to yeah. yeah. Well, I got, I got. Listen, I'm gonna come in. I know you guys are younger than me, and you guys have a. You know, this is this is fun to like. Who knows which site? But hold on a second. Zazzle. Have you never used Zazzle? I have, but Zazzle? I quickly looked at their pricing, and it was too expensive. It was around five dollars per sticker. Yeah. 
You know, I, I agree. I, I walked away from some sticker swag as well. <laughs> you know, I'm like, shit, for five, I might as well get a shirt for ten. But, yeah. you know, we're, we're definitely, let me guys, let me know on Twitter, you guys, we're, we're thinking about getting curator swag, you know, water cooler shirts. And so if that's something you guys would like. And, you know, here's the other thing, Ryan. Things don't have to scale. You don't need to sell a million product hunt shirts. You just need 149 people like Jimmy Mackin that like your company that much that they would wear it, right? And yeah. I, I do think that's awesome. And uh, anyway, back to you, Jimmy. Sorry. Well, cool. Let, stuff. Yeah. So this is this is what we're gonna do here for the rest of the show because we have like we gotten through like one percent of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce it. Either one of you just jump in if you want to add some notes on it or t just any t any talking points on this. The next one I move on, move on to here is called Zirtual. Uh, now what's interesting I found this through Product Hunt. Zirtual is like a virtual assistant, but they actually have sort of standardized training and standardized ways of doing things. So, they, so the nice thing about it, I think this is very true for real estate, Chris. Any good VAs, right, are overloaded because you know they get recommended by a few people, and then very quickly their workload gets to 150% of their capacity. So now we have a trend in real estate where we've got to find, you know, good quality people to work with us at at the VA cost that we can have some control and some management over. So I'm not sure if you guys want to add anything to that, but Zirtual, it's it's virtual with a Z, is a service I'd absolutely check out. The pricing's good, the model's smart. I'm a huge fan of it, and I know VA is is one of those big topics in real estate where we're always getting questions on it, Chris. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, they, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Have you myself. used them? Have you used them, Ryan? I haven't used uh, Zirtual, no. Uh, but there are some things that I may start trying to uh, outsource. Um, as product time grows. I still want to make sure I have that personal touch and everything, but yeah. there's some things that I, I just don't have time for. So Zirtual is something I should probably check out. Yeah, I think the the, the probably the problem Zirtual is trying to solve, Jimmy, is that the, yep. the actual network of virtual assistants that are really great in the United States, it, it really is kind of this underground network. And so, like, mm -hmm. you know, if I can go to TaskRabbit, which I love, and get someone yeah. to come over and, like, fix the plumbing, you know, I'll do it because it's TaskRabbit and I know they vet them and triple background check them and ensure the work. So, like, I don't think that really exists in the virtual assistant world, like the vetting, the, the training, uh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Zir no, you're, you're, yeah. yeah and you're, and you're, on, the, on the same note, another one we found, I think, on Product Hunt was Ruby the receptionist, which is just if you have a company that handles a high volume of calls, you know, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a way not to bring somebody on full time, but to just make sure the phone gets picked up every single time. Chris, so real quickly yeah, on that yeah. note, so one of our clients, uh, Paul Rudman, who is in Austin, uses Ruby the receptionist. So I actually experienced it this past week, and it was <laughs> it was phenomenal, right? It wasn't a generic call answering service. The you know the individual who was answering the phone for Paul knew about Paul, knew Paul had a baby, knew his schedule, and it was like you just had no idea this person actually was a third-party provider who was handling those phone calls. And this is particularly important, guys, and you heard me talk about me a few weeks ago. If you are someone who's getting signed calls, who's getting uh, you know, internet lead calls, and you're missing the vast majority of them, you mm -hmm. know, you're going to get a return on, on a service like this. So Ruby the Receptionist, again, both Zirtual and Ruby the Receptionist are both U.S.-based companies. These are not offshores, which personally I, I like because I think it's just actually something I like to see more of. So um, on that mm -hmm. note, Next one here we're going to list is called MailLift. Chris, just talk to me about MailLift, what it is, why you recommend it. Well, let's also give a quick plug because Paul Redman's a brand new client that got a listing like right away from our work. And I'm wondering, yeah. is that is that partly due to Ruby? Uh, and if, <laughs> if it is, Ruby's making them, you know, making them uh, calls. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about MailLift really quick. And right. one of the things I told Jimmy Ryan before the show was like, we're going to bring this guy on, and, and he's awesome, but he probably doesn't know every single product that comes through Product Hunt. Is that fair to say? Or at this point, would you say you still touch everything that goes through there? You know, uh, two months ago, I would have said I, I would have remembered every product, but now I'm starting to lose track. I, I do remember MailLift, though, and I've had emails and actually Skyped with Brian Curlis, who uh, is running that. Yeah, he and, I, he and I chatted as well because they, oh. they have an API where 
Uh, so in real estate, like a handwritten mm -hmm. note is something that some people, it's built into the business they run, you know, every quarter or every year, twice a year, they handwrite a note. But there's also, of course, some action. Let's say you get a new lead and you have a good call with them and you want to send them a handwritten note. So this is, uh, and, you know, real handwriting. This is handwritten letters for service and sales professionals. They're real handwritten notes that basically you're not writing. Um, mm -hmm. the, the bifold card is $5 per letter envelope included. Uh, they have things like, you know, trifold letter. Uh, you know, they have where they will actually just, you know, handwrite the envelope only because all those little things get mail opened more. So it's direct mail, handwritten letters. You know, think about it like this, Jimmy. Think about, you know, if you have an assistant, and you're a realtor, you would probably have in the past said, hey, you know, do you mind handwriting them a thank you note? You know, and your assistant would have written it for you. That's not out of bounds. Well, now this company will write your notes for you. I mean, it's just as simple. I think it's smart. You could and you could put people on like handwritten note drip campaigns, right? Where they like actually do it like yeah. I, I'm see which is actually taking the best of email marketing and applying to handwritten note, which is, I think is really smart. You can give them important dates and they'll do it for you. All right, cool. So on that note, let's move on here because we got a, we got a ton more to cover here. Uh, on the real, real, of, real, real quick, Jimmy, can I give a quick plug for Product Hunt? So uh, what I want everybody watching right now to do is go to producthunt.co and at the very top, I feel like all of our all of our ninja tricks are going to get given away now, Jimmy. <laughs> We've got a few other resources. Uh, if you go to the top, there's an email opt-in. Get the best new product discoveries in your inbox each day. I can't recommend that you guys you know sign up for that enough. Uh, and then also share the link on Facebook, share it on Twitter, uh, recommend mm -hmm. it to others. Uh, Ryan, is there a Twitter handle for Product Hunt? Yep, it's just Product Hunt. So at Product Hunt, if you. Yep. You guys, lead them. Let them know you're watching and that you really love what they've built here. But uh, at least subscribe by email. I, I don't know that there's anything right now that Ryan would even have to sell you. Uh, you know, that's not his business model. But maybe you more t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right. <laughs> yeah, all right, Jimmy. Back to you, Jimmy. I wanted to give a quick plug. You know, normally we let our guests go at this point. We're keeping Ryan on. Uh, because of the number of technologies we wanted to cover, but I wanted to give a quick plug, at least opt into the email list, tweet Ryan, tweet at Product Hunt, let them know you're enjoying the show tonight. Cool. Yeah, so so Ryan, this is, and I guess this is my last question, and then we'll, Chris and I can just wrap it up. We don't want to keep you too, too long here, but on that same note, um, in terms of what you've experienced working with so many startups, right, so many companies are out there hustling, who are trying to get the word out about their business, who are building great stuff, getting feedback, improving upon all that stuff. Talk to me just a little bit about, in your experience, what established businesses right, can learn from sort of the, the nature and the environment that sort of startups really live in, right? Because they are sort of radically different, and I think there's a lot of lessons right. that we can learn from startups in comparison to what we always usually do with startups, which is try to learn from established businesses. Yeah, uh, let's see. Where do I start? I mean, I can, again, kind of say some semi-generic advice that seems obvious, but it's important to consider is really what do people want or what are you actually providing that they aren't finding elsewhere? And mm -hmm. then something uh, maybe less obvious but incredibly important is what are they doing right now to... Uh, to what behavior are they, they doing right now that, that you're also providing. Um, so if you're trying to radically change behavior uh, too much, then it's, one, going to be very hard to communicate your value and what you're providing, but also it's incredibly mm -hmm. hard to change them to do something new. And also, if they're not already doing something, it probably means that they don't care, or they don't want what you're trying to build. Um, so I, I don't know if that really answers the question too much. I mean, uh, the real estate industry is far different from... Um, you know some of the technologies, the technology space that I'm primarily in. But what I love yeah. about sharing knowledge between industries is that you can take some learnings from both sides and apply them in, in unique ways. Uh, that's why I love when someone goes from one industry, let's say video games. Uh, I come from a gaming background. How can you apply uh, user psychology and game design to, let's say, real estate, for example? Um, so it's interesting to to learn from different uh, industries like that and markets. 
Well, the, and the one thing I'd add to what you're saying there, which I think is 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 something that is so true. Chris, we see this with with real estate web sites at launch, which is trying to change the behavior of the way people actually search or the behaviors they performed in the past, right? Which I think is, it, it, for me, the only correlation and one of the quickest correlations I could draw is in terms of marketing, right? In, in one tool that you could use, like there's a company called WordStream that I just learned about this week. Um, again, from Clarity. Uh, it's called WordStream. They're based here in Boston. But the service itself, if you go to wordstream.com, you can actually do sort of really advanced keyword research, just like a Google Keyword Research Planner on steroids, basically. And what's interesting to me, if you're thinking about marketing to consumers, let's say specifically to attract people who are thinking about selling their property, right? How do you uncover what are they searching for? What are the questions that they have? And how do you make sure that your marketing collateral, your message, is in alignment with that? Right, so if you actually use a tool like WordStream or you know free version like Google Keyword Planner, you can uncover a lot of information about your existing consumers' behaviors and what they actually search. So I do think that's something that we don't. And this is the the point I think is a little more subtle, Ryan, that you're making, which is when you're a startup, you you think about these things all the time, right? right. You think about because because you're just new to the space. When you're an established business. You sort of live off your assumptions and live off of like just like the way things are. And I think right. we have to kind of get back to that model of getting back to learning more about our consumers, even if we're an experienced agent or an experienced uh, real estate team. Yeah. So I on mean, that note, there's, there's value oh, in being naive to an extent uh, when you come into an industry not mm -hmm. having some of the understanding of how things used to work. Then you can come in with some naivete and uh, potentially change it. Or fail, um, but there is an advantage to not being from a market and entering into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that that, that for me is is the way we got to be approaching, at least in real estate. And I know you don't know much about real estate, but in our industry, we have to have sort of that uh, curiosity to to learn more about the people that we serve, and not just assume that it's always going to be the same or it's always going to be. Um, yeah. Well, Jimmy, here, here, here's a good example. Like there was sure. some news this week in real estate. There's a uh, a company called House Happy, uh, which is worth checking out. And yeah. it's you know if you think of Product Hunt is the dig or Reddit for cool products and software, right? Mm -hmm. It's the it's this but for this. House Hunt, House Happy is like Pinterest but for real estate, right? You know, a lot of times maybe that's okay. Like that's what Ryan's saying. Why try to reinvent the wheel? Like. You know, yep. I think. I, I mean, I think that one of the things that we'll see in the next two to three years will be Uber for real estate, right? Like, mm -hmm. how hard is it to have every realtor logged in to an application at the same time that would then track their coordinates so the consumer can see <laughs> on the map and they could, you know, request yeah. the closest agent to the home they want to see, right? So I, I want sometimes our folks to to think. What is out there that consumers really love, the Ubers of the world, the Reddits of the world, the Pinterest of the world, and how can we actually just be the real estate that? It's something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cool. And Ryan, we end every show. Chris and I sort of do last call where we sort of wrap up and recap here. So we'll let yeah. you off. And, and by the way, Jimmy, I didn't even make my point there. So the reason I brought up how <laughs> the reason the reason I brought up House Happy yes. is because they signed a deal today with List Hub to get them access to more than two million listings, right? So like this little simple idea that like, hey, it's like Pinterest for real estate, that gets you enough buzz, that gets you a little bit of traction, and then all of a sudden somebody like Realtor.com and Move, like now if they just give this guy the data, they can test how Pinterest for real estate compares to how regular search on portals compare. So anyway, List Hub gave the data feed to House Happy. You know, anyway, there's something to all that. I don't know. <laughs> getting a little maybe I'm getting buzzed at this point in the show. <laughs> Alright, cool. Well hey guys, if you if you haven't followed Product Hunt on Twitter at Product Hunt, go to ProductHunt.co, subscribe to their blog. Uh, again, this is to to me there's uh, so many correlations with what you guys are doing there, Ryan, or what you specifically are doing there at Product Hunt that we can learn from in the real estate industry. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We really do appreciate it. We know you're a busy guy. We know that you're a one-man show over there. We know that uh, you know your time is uh, valuable. I have, I have so some help. It's not all me. So. <laughs>
Cool. Well, cool. Thanks cool. A lot. I really and, appreciate the. Uh, this has been fun. Again, I, I like like talking about products, and I knew this would be a a good call. So thanks a lot. Cool. Cool. So now you, because I know that this is the first time you're on a Google Plus Hangout, just click on the Hangout button in the top right there, and you be should be good to go. <laughs> All right. Let me figure this out. All right. Cool. See you guys. <laughs> Later. Thanks, Ryan. All right, Chris. So, Chris, you're not gonna kind of a ton of things that we want, we got kind of left here. You, you're muted, Chris. Yeah. Just really quickly, we have the ability to eject a user. We don't. <laughs> we, don't we don't have to have the get. I, I, have you purposely hidden that feature from me? No, I felt like we just. No, I, I don't know. I felt like we just had like a really good day with Ryan, and you just like ended it quickly at the end. I don't know. <laughs> it was like we had an, I mean, we had a great hour, but you know what? Normally we do let people go before this, and yeah. the number of things that we mentioned. Are there more to mention, or are we yep. doing pillow talk where you recap? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not. We're, we're not. We're not. We're not doing pillow talk this week. Okay. We're gonna. We're gonna because we're gonna do sort of a true last call, which will kind of cover the rest here. And the reason I let him okay. go, we yeah. only have one for the hour. I don't want to keep the guy on for another thirty minutes, and that's how long we go. But we, we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. And most of the stuff you know, so I want to get your two cents on this. Because yeah. if you're looking at the donk right now, let's just go. Let's just keep going here because um, we talk a lot about analytics. We talk about m measuring metrics that matter. This is a conversation you and I are having actively right now. What are the metrics that, that matter to our business? What are the metrics that matter to our clients? How do we represent that? You mentioned cycleio.com a few weeks ago. I'm bringing it back up because I want you to share what that is and how it works. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's actually very sure. simple. But if you're sending out PDFs or listing presentations as a PDF, yep, you can send it through there, and it will give you the analytics and insights into things like time on site. So normally on a website, you get time on site. With yep. Cyclio, you get time in PDF. And you can turn any PowerPoint into a PDF, so if you're sending over like a pre -lit, I think one of the best use cases here, real specific advice, Jimmy. Yeah. If you do what our buddy Sean Moore recommends, which is a pre-listing presentation, which I think most top producers are using. So yeah. if, if, if we're going to meet on Tuesday at 1 p.m., on Monday at 1 p.m., you're actually going to get the, the printed version, the deck. You're going to get everything actually the day before we meet. And if you actually were to use this technology mm -hmm. when you sent that PDF pre-listing presentation over, you would have really a, a competitive advantage over that consumer because you would know that of the 30 things in your listing packet, here are the six things they spent the most time on. And that would yeah. obviously guide you towards covering that the most in-depth. So some real exactly. use cases. Yep. Cool. So uh, a business project management tool. Just really quickly on that note, we love Trello. Again, this is we, we want to just this is kind of the Gary Gold version, Chris, where you poke your head up every three months. We're going to throw a bunch of stuff at you guys. Some of the stuff you're probably going to use, some of the stuff you won't use, but we, we want you guys to be aware that it exists. So Trello.com, really simple project management tool, super visual. It's like having a whiteboard. Uh, but you know a, a cloud-based version of this where you can access it from any device. We use it. We love it. Uh, personally, one of my favorite tools we use, Hall. Uh, Chris, 20 seconds to describe what Hall.com is and why people should use it. Yeah, and just you know, looking at Twitter, Valerie and everybody are tweeting. They they do miss Pillow Talk. Uh, you know, <laughs> they really wish there was a right. Pillow Talk. Ju Judy Clem and uh, yeah. So anyway, we we so, we. Uh, yeah, we will recap. I didn't think anything else. Yeah, the well, we can... No, it's okay. Here, Go. really quick, one quick pillow yes. talk. I would never do Chris's pillow talk, but <laughs> quick recap would be yes. uh, Twit Gift, Zirtual, Ruby the Receptionist, and Mail Lift. There's your, there's your, you know, Chris doesn't do, you know, Chris doesn't do pillow talk, Jimmy. There we go. So the next one is Hall.com. 20, 20 yes. seconds on Hall.com. Yeah. Hall.com allows you to communicate in real time with your team better than anything else does. I mean, we have tried all the, like, you know, you can try running a Facebook group. You can try using Google Chat. You can try Facebook mm -hmm. Chat. You can try AIM. But Hall.com is the best team chat tool ever. Uh, they got a plug in people work. I like it that much. Uh, we, we did our first annual coffee with curator, uh, internal curator staff meeting this Monday, all through the hall chat. 
it's really a great technology. H A L L dot com. Take a look. Yeah, it's phenomenal. We love it. It's one of the one of the big breakthroughs this year. And just to give a plug for uh, our buddies at Thirty Seven Signals, who wrote Rework and they also wrote Remote. That's where we sort of first learned about this idea of using group chat, even if you work in the same office as somebody. Group chat's one of those tools you definitely take advantage of. All right, cool. So some, some. Uh, no, Jimmy, really quick, one, one last thing there. For those of you that yeah. have teams and that are actually running a real business, which is you know not a hundred percent of you, but for the majority of you that actually want to run your business like a business, one best yeah. practice here that people don't realize, Jimmy, is that there are certain people that even if they're in the office with you, they they're just not going to really say what they feel. They're not going to say what's on their mind in that belly-to-belly -belly environment. So for my friends watching that are in a face-to-face -face office every day, unlike us, that are belly-to-belly -belly with their staff, you also should take a step back and do some chat because it gives people a little more courage to say what's on their mind. You know, it, it really the goal of the chat is to give people the ability to say what needs to change. So the tool's great, but the ideology yeah. behind the tool and the psychology behind people being more comfortable sharing through hall than yeah. through the phone is actually really interesting. To me. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. So on that same note, one tool I want to expose you guys to, this is a little bit more advanced, but it's definitely worth checking out. I am so bullish on this company. It's called intercom.io. And the way I want you to think about this, right, and, and we're actually starting to explore integrating this with what we do, is it, it is the ability to have a conversation with somebody through your website, but it isn't live chat in the sense that you can track and you can message people even if they're not logged into your site. You can get alerted when people come back to your website. You can set up rules and notifications, examples being if someone's not been on your website for 30 days, you can send them a quick message automatically that says, we've missed you, you know, hope all, all's well. If you haven't been to our website in a while, we've updated it recently with some new listings, check it out here. Right, so it's a bit, Chris, of mixed panel meets live chat meets sort of Mailchimp in that sense, because you can leverage both SMS marketing, email marketing, and sort of that live interaction. I'm a huge fan of it. Again, this is something that we're exploring, so I want to make sure you guys are aware of it. Intercom.io. Uh, on that note, let's just transition real quickly into advertising and marketing. You guys have heard us talk about ad stage before in the past. You've heard me kind of end last week. Jimmy, let me, let, me stop, let me stop you for one second because sure. that, that intercom.io and right now we use Mixpanel, th this idea, just so people get it, is like, you know, you want to set up these trap doors that happen that create marketing that's consumer driven by a behavior. The behavior can be mm -hmm. lack of behavior. Right, the behavior can be that they haven't been inactivity. to your website. Right. Yeah, in inactivity is a behavior as well. And so think about the idea like if I go to GameStop and I I buy a game for my son and I'm already on their email list, the purchase at GameStop mm -hmm. should trigger an email, right? So that's what, what what's happening is whether people aren't using your product, are using it, and then even better, how they're using it. So the idea would be if somebody looks at five blog posts on your site, you should mm -hmm. then email them something that says, thanks for checking out our blog, right? Because you know they use that piece of the site. It really is the future of marketing, and it, 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 it's a lot of work, but these technologies are making it easier by the day, so good find. You know what, you know, the last thing, I'll, last thing I'll say on that note, right, is uh, it is it is a much more human way to interact with somebody who's on your website versus the traditional sort of fill out this form and we'll contact you back. And that's why we're moving in that direction as a company because it is so much more human or people work sort of style is what uh, you know what we're aiming for here. So on that note, um, advertising and marketing really quickly. Yeah. You guys, I'm going to cut this down. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go Sorry, ahead. I was going to cut it down just because of time. Can I do that? Okay. Yeah, you okay. want. I want to focus. Yeah. yeah, I want to focus on two because they're really related to what you just mentioned, right? Okay. So, intercom.io yeah. is trying to take email and SMS to a behavioral-based place. What I what I love, what's on the list for advertising and marketing is adroll.com and custom audiences for Facebook, and because those really do the same thing. They're identifying yeah. someone who's already shown a behavior and then moving more marketing at them. So as an example, AdRoll 
anyone that ever visits your website, anyone that ever goes to a landing page, whether they register or not, it will cookie them. Our buddy calls it tagging the shark, and then it will begin mm -hmm. to advertise to them more. The other one is custom audiences for Facebook. This is something we're rolling out next week for our clients, which basically allows you to take every lead in your database currently and then run marketing on Facebook to them specifically. So if you, you know, we have clients that have generated thousands of leads in the last 12 months. Now just those leads can get a campaign. Think about this, Jimmy. Think about if you have your sphere of influence on a CSV file. Well, mm -hmm. just your sphere could be uploaded and just your sphere could see a certain ad. What if you have all your tiger leads, all your boomtown, you know, this, these, these buyer systems, right? What if you mm -hmm. took every boomtown or tiger lead and only showed them additional home search ads, right? Yeah. So that is two things. It's adroll.com and it's custom audiences, which was just rolled out to Facebook really recently, but it's having a uh, huge impact. So you work so hard to get leads. The idea is that in an industry like ours, leads don't convert on day one all the time. And so just because you have a lead doesn't mean you need to stop marketing. Please tell me. Somebody should tell Yeah. No, that, 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 that's it right there, Chris. That's actually based with a lot of research. Like Google actually did that guide. Uh, the Air Moment of Truth, they did that, uh, that co-study, if you will, with NAR. I was talking to Nobu about this actually when I saw him in Long Island. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amount of times a consumer has to see your brand, has to be exposed to it, the research that goes involved with it, this is just sort of one avenue to say this guy is sort of, or this gal is everywhere, right? So custom audiences on Facebook, and they actually made it easy to use before you had to use the Power Editor, which is the single world's worst tool that's ever existed. Now you can do it right there in the ads interface, which, by the way, is getting a huge update. So I'm going to close with just two more things here, Chris, uh, that I wanted to share. So for me, guys, I'm somebody who is always sort of researching um, design ideas, sort of best practices. So there's a couple sites I want you to check out, which is, you heard me mention this before on the show, visually, I, I have this sort of personal mission to improve sort of the, the quality of the marketing material that we send out in real estate because it's so terrible and the bar so low. Visual.ly, or del y, uh, ly, excuse me, visual.ly is a marketplace for creative content. So videos, PDFs, listing presentations, you can basically contract a designer, not you, not your assistant, someone who actually has a design experience, to create uh, design material for you guys. And the last thing I'm going to end with, Chris, here tonight is a cool app I found that I thought was really interesting, which is called Sign with Envoy. Maybe I'm mispronouncing that, but Sign with Envoy. And what was interesting to me about this, which is it's kind of like Open Home Pro, but for you can use it in sort of a couple different um, couple different variations of it where people can come into your office or sort of you know sit down you can have them introduce themselves where they type in their name they can fill out some questions and they actually take a picture of themselves and that uploads it to your database which I thought was pretty fascinating so I know you guys are meeting people through open houses people coming into your offices whatever it is sign in with envoy was actually I thought it was a very interesting tool I thought it's worth checking out so I'll end with that one cool good stuff Jimmy and you know all the uh, you know there were so many things you know mentioned tonight we can't expect Julie to link everything up in the show notes <laughs> but uh, we will post the recording by the way the recordings of each week are available instantly so if you go to curator.com or youtube.com slash curator TV uh, mm -hmm. it's very easy to find the recordings uh, I've got a couple trips coming up Jimmy are you traveling in the near future we have some stuff let, let, let's not talk about uh, the one event that we're probably doing just yet uh, that we got the paperwork on, but okay. we don't want to talk about that yet. But I'll talk about where you're going to be. Okay, so I'll be in Denver next week. Uh, yeah. Actually, in two weeks, I'll be in Denver for Explode uh, on uh, gosh May 20th. So you're anywhere near Denver, come on out. Let's make sure we invite our clients to that, Jimmy. Um, the other one is going to be Delaware, doing an awesome event with Remax Delaware. So. Pretty pretty diverse locations, and then uh, a couple weeks after that, the first week of June, Jimmy and I will both be in Atlanta for RE Tech South. We'll have the curator crew there. Tons of our clients will be there. Uh, it's going to be a good time. And you know, one of the other last things, Jimmy, I'm just going to give our, our company a plug. Uh, you know, we're we're growing pretty quickly. 
Uh, we're actually already selling out in markets, and we always talk about what do we do that's different. You know, who are we as a company, and who are we looking to attract? So, for those of you that watch our show and and that enjoy our content, and maybe have seen us speak, we we really had this epiphany that that you know what curator is doing, meaning when we charge money. Obviously, the show is what we're doing right now for free. But when when we bring on a client, what we're doing is we're we're getting this idea that DIY is dead. So we DIF, that's our new model, is that we do it for agents and teams because they either, one, don't want to do it themselves, or two, they just don't have time to do it themselves. And so we're a digital marketing company, and we use CRMs and landing pages, half the stuff we talked about tonight. You know, we, we use a lot of technology but what Curator is as a company, if anybody's interested, is if you're an agent or a team that wants this stuff done for you, as opposed to doing it all yourself, choosing it all yourself, setting it up all yourself, that is what we provide to the marketplace. And whether you're already using a system now, you have multiple lead sources, uh, we take that over. Yeah. And, we, and we do it for you. So anyway, Jimmy, I wanted to plug that because you know, a lot of times it's hard to explain how you're different than your competitor, right? And like a lot of times people say, how are you different than this? Or how are you different than that? And at the end of the day, we are a company that get paid to do things for people. You know, and we're just going to embrace that, that like we do shit for people. We think that's actually a cool model. And yeah, we use software and strategies. Uh, anyway, I, well, love, uh, I gave this example. It's the, it's the Wikipedia entry which I think all of our audience should do. If somebody were to go to Wikipedia right now and they were to read what your company's about in one sentence, what would they see? And so we had that exercise and the epiphany is that our company doesn't do marketing that's awesome, even though we do. Our, you know, The reason we exist is to do the work for our clients. Uh, so anyway, why do you exist as a brand? Any closing thoughts there on that, Jimmy? No, I, th I think my only bit of advice there, something we've experienced and we've learned as a, as, as a company, and you know, we've just passed. You know, the reason we're talking about this is we just kind of passed our one-year milestone of actually selling our product, our service, to uh, to the world at large. And you know, something I've personally learned through that process, Chris, and something you and I talk all about all the time is is defining what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in real estate, what you have, what we struggle with, and my my advice is for everyone who's listening is. You've got to focus on the things that make you money. And people have hired us in the past to help them with blog posts and help them with their social media profiles and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, you know the things that really matter when you boil it down are the things that actually make you money and help your business grow. So it's very important whether you hire us or hire any company or just if you actually do do it yourself or you train someone to do it for you, it's to focus their energy and effort on the things that actually help your business grow. And the sooner you get to that realization, you know, the better your business is off. So that's my last thoughts on it. And uh, you know, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We're on next week. We got Edward Zilton. Is that his name? Yeah. We well, we have an author. He's an author, Jimmy. So you know, we we, we like to be diverse. Get Ed Yeah, and he's yeah. he's a brilliant dude. So we're trying to bring on some New York Times bestsellers like Chris Brogan, Gary V. We try to bring on some technology specialists like Ryan Hoover. Uh, we bring on salespeople like Ryan Stuman. We bring on coaches like you know the Tom Ferries and Ben Kinney's of the world. We bring on agents like Mark Spain and Lisa Archer. So we love doing the show. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, let us know on Twitter what you thought about how we did tonight. See you next week. <laughs> See you guys next week.